This is Sunset News, your source for the latest in news, community stories, economics, weather and sports. I am Glenora Shipura. Now in the news tonight, corruption, maladministration and mismanagement at local and regional authorities are killing this country and we cannot go about it this way. This was said by Polis Noah, Director General of the Anti-Corruption Commission this morning during a discussion on the promotion of the best anti-corruption practices within local authorities and regional councils in Namibia held at Swakopmund. Now according to Noah, some local authorities are a mess. If these practices continue, these local authorities will continue sinking like the Titanic and they cannot be turned around again. Now, the APRM country assessment of Namibia largely celebrates socioeconomic development as a success without seemingly taking a closer look at the realities. Gender-based violence in particular is put into perspective and officially adopted policies are celebrated instead of unpleasant realities. Now, an estimated 1 million Pangolians have been and continue to be harvested from the world in African and Asian countries to meet the high demands for their scales, skin, blood, and even fetuses that are believed to have several different uses, both in fashion, traditional medicine, and cooking. World Pangolian Day celebrates on Saturday, celebrated on Saturday, and to celebrate Pangolians, raise awareness and recommit international NGOs to the fight against the global capturing of Pangolians in Africa and Asia. Swapo members of parliament Modestus Amutse on Wednesday introduced a motion in the National Assembly calling for the provision of free Wi-Fi at all public and private facilities in the country. The motion was discussed briefly before it was referred to a relevant standing committee for further investigation and to present parliamentarians with all the relevant information. Now, Netumo Nandin Daitwa, the International Relations Minister, who recently led delegations of 40 business people and officials to Angola for trade talks, said it was a fruitful trip during which they identified bottlenecks to their economic cooperation, as well as the ways to best address these. These delegates represented different sectors and industries such as mining, energy, tourism, agriculture, manufacturing, transport, logistics, finance, banking, health and retail. The minister encouraged business people of the two countries to connect and build sustainable business, business ties with each other in order to enhance trade and investment relations between Namibia and Angola for the benefit of the two nations. Now, Youth and Sports Minister Agnes Shongarero says her relationship with Deputy Minister Emma Cantema Gomez is probably the best in the entire government between a minister and their deputy, contrary to a report of supposed fallout between the pair. Now, Cantema Gomez under fire in recent weeks for a trip she undertook to Cameroon, where the 2022 Africa Cup of Nations Championship were held. She also stated that she has an excellent relationship with her minister. When we return, we bring you Community Talk. Welcome back to Sunset News. Now let's have a look at our community talk. While Namibia is certainly blessed with rains, the downside is that showers have a negative impact on our roads. In light of recent flooding in the Konene region, the Roads Authority has issued a warning. To have a look. The Roads Authority has issued a warning that due to heavy rains countrywide, flooding or washaways of some roads are expected. In light of this, motorists are requested to exercise extreme caution when travelling at all times. The public is further requested to take note of the following affected roads in the Kunene region. The Uch Bridge and some sections of the MR76 between Uist and Korechas were severely damaged. Hence, the section from Uch River to Korechas has been closed with immediate effect and until further notice. Road users can use alternative routes via Omaruru. The MR126 from Korechas um, was washed away for about 7 kilometers at the Long Awesome Pass. Road users should not attempt to cross the Unup and Werp rivers during this period. The road is only accessible by 4x4. However, extra caution must be exercised even if you have a 4x4. 
then the D2612 in the Twyfelfontein area. Uh, flooding in the Abu Huab River has affected this road, cutting off access to Twyfelfontein, and this area is currently inaccessible. Then the Huanup River and the Skalem River were flooded, and vehicles cannot pass through at all. The Sesfontein has been cut off completely and cannot be accessed. That, that section is the MR128. Then the RA also warned that the DR2628, which is the link between the MR126 and the D2612, is temporarily closed to all traffic. The RA will monitor all these affected roads and will continuously update the public on relevant media platforms and the RA social media page. In the meantime, the RA's maintenance teams are on standby to ensure that damaged roads are repaired where possible and within a reasonable time period. Finally, the RA appeals to all motorists to plan their journeys ahead of time and to find out about any road closures or floods in their intended routes and to report any road damages to the authority should they come across anything. Now, social media is flooded with angry Namibians after a clash with tourists. More on this in our story of the day right after the break. Welcome back to Sunset News. Now, in story of the day, social media is flooded with angry Namibians after tourists climbed in the trees at Sasa's Play, something that is against the law. Yolanda Nell has more. Namibians are up in arms after it came to light that tourists who visited our country earlier this year climbed into the trees at Sasa's Play to take some photos. I speak to Nepresh Sony of the incident after many took to social media saying that they should be found and fined. This is Rupesh from Namibia Travel and Tourism Forum. Um, regarding the tourist who climbed the trees in Sosos Flay and we've also got footage of somebody flying a drone in Sosos Flay, um, I think it all comes down to um, awareness. The problem is a lot of tourists are f coming to Namibia for the first time. Um, and obviously, it is highly illegal to use a drone and, uh, you know, pose, touch the trees, not even climb. It's not even allowed to touch the trees. And I think it's a good awareness issue that was raised. Um, somebody just found one photo, but we then found a lot more photos, people flying drones, and we need a lot more uh, vigilance around these areas. Uh, it's quite clear. One of the reasons that is happening is also because of a lot of self-drive tourists coming here, younger self-drive tourists who come rent a vehicle and go to these places. They don't know it's not allowed. And I think we must start with uh, focusing on the, the, the airports and the entry points and online awareness campaigns and what's allowed, what's not allowed. I think it's highly critical that we do that. I don't think the tourists are in the country. Um, th this is a few weeks ago and it doesn't help chasing after these guys particularly you know we tried that with the graffiti guys unfortunately covid happened but with these guys as well um they've closed on their face the instagram page or they've deleted the photos the problem is how do we use it to educate other tourists who are in town or coming into the country without um, swearing on these posts and you know we it's still we all when we comment we are ambassadors to the country we don't want to look like nobody's welcome and we are hostile so taking actions against these tourists will not really help the cause because some other tourists might do it 
I would like that we can all make it more educational and awareness out of it and have more posters, have more um, people know about it, that um, there's a camera there maybe so we can immediately identify what happens and there's a way there are ways we can deal with it going forward so we'll definitely as the forum we'll take it up um, with the ministry to see how we can implement some ways to create education around it and also to monitor these things um, on ongoing basis so that it doesn't come to our attention on a month later or a few weeks later we should be able to deal with these incidents immediately Thank you, Yolanda Nell, for that report. Now, Namibia raised its key interest rate for the first time in six years, safeguarding its currency pack with South Africa's rent. More on this in our economic news right after the break. Thank you for staying with Sunset News. Now, in our economic news, Namibia raised its key interest rate for the first time in six years, safeguarding its currency pack with South Africa's rent. The Monetary Policy Committee lifted the rate by 25 basis points from 3.75% to 4% respectively. The interest rates have a negative impact on the performance of the Namibian economy. Joseph Shihema, a local analyst, is of the view that the hike in interest rate is not appropriate at this time. Business and the economy are grappling with too many shocks already, which are increasingly becoming impossible to bear. High interest rate has become a major burden for many investors and high non-performing loans are posing a serious risk at stability of the financial system. Furthermore, the economy is still and essentially bad built by large size and inefficient public sector, low rates of savings and investment, persistent large budget deficits, and, inconsist in, and, sorry, and inconsistent macroeconomic environment. These challenges underscore the need for policies that will stimulate the economy, he said. Now let's have a look at our economic indicators. The Namibian dollar is up against the US dollar and the euro and down against the British pound and the yuan. There are very little movements of the Namibian stock exchange. The overall index closed up from the previous day. Gold, zinc and Brent crude oil is up while copper is down with 0.44 points. Stay tuned for the weather right after the break. Choose your flex package with Paratus today. Sign up for ultra-fast fiber with the convenience of mobile LTE. That's two products in one bundle. It's new, it's one bill, and you can stay connected in more than one location. For more information, visit paratus.africa forward slash na. Thank you for staying with Sunset News. Now, in our weather story, although the clouds are clearing up somewhat from last week, the Namibian Weather Service still predicts isolated showers for large parts of the country for the next seven days. Now, in our weather prediction, tomorrow, Katima Mulilo and Omaruru is the hottest at 34 degrees, while Oshuarongo at 15 degrees is the coolest in the north. 
In the south, Aranos and Iram's Flay at 36 degrees is the hottest, and Rearboth and Orangemood at 17 degrees, the coolest in the south. Now we'll be looking at international news right after the break. Welcome back to Sunset News. Now let's have a look at our international news. Wealthy nations must improve their floundering flagship debt relief initiative or face a spate of debt crisis in the developing world. Experts and campaigners say as meetings of the finance of chief G20 major economics opened on Thursday, as the pandemic battered global economics, Sorry, as the pandemic bartered global economies, the group of 20 leading economies launched measures, including a temporary debt service suspension for poor countries to provide breathing room, as well as the common framework, a debt restructuring scheme for long-term relief. Alarm bells are ringing for many, according to the IMF, some 60% of low-income countries mostly in Africa, are either in debt distress or at high risk of it, up from less than 30% in 2015. This year, 74 low-income nations must repay $35 billion to bilateral and private lenders, nearly, doubt, nearly double from 2020. The World Bank calculated, with the U.S. Federal Reserve on the verge of hiking interest rates, borrowing costs are set to increase for riskier emerging markets. Even a functioning common framework will solve only half the problems, experts say. Countries must get help in growing economies, not just traditionally austerity measures. It is not solving a growth problem, and you cannot solve a debt problem by killing growth, said Vara Songwa, the executive secretary of the UN Economic Commission for Africa. Now more on Maximilian Baiva, who says he will continue passing his skills to Golden Arrows after, after the break. Do stay tuned. Welcome back to Sunset News. Now, in our sports news, former Brave Warriors number one, Maximilian Baeva, says he will continue passing on his skills to his colleagues at his South African club, Golden Arrows teammates, after remaining in the club's books, even when he hardly features for the team. Now, the goalkeeper further expressed gratitude towards the club for keeping him and using his experience for the development of other young goalkeepers. Middleweight Namibia's boxer Lucas Ndafuluma has refused to press the panic button even when he is yet to hear about his next fight. Now the boxer who lost his last fight last year is eager to brush off that defeat and begin his year with a bang. Ndafuluma continues working hard in the gym in anticipation of a fight that can come anytime soon. In our next story, at $29.1 billion, Namibian, dollars, Namibian international Peter Shalulile is rated the most valuable player in South Africa's Premier Soccer League, according to Kickoff magazine, which yesterday announced a combined list of league's most valuable 11 players. Now, Shalulile's teammates at Sundown, Tembatswane, is rated second at $25.7 Namibian million. Next up, we'll be taking a look at the highlights. Do stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, 
We are welcome to another exciting edition. Thank you for staying with Sunset News. Now, if you are just joining us, here are the highlights. Corruption, maladministration, and mismanagement at local and regional authorities are killing this country, and we cannot go about it this way. According to NOAA, some local authorities are a mess. If these practices continue, these local authorities will continue sinking like the Titanic, and they cannot be turned around again. The APRM country assessment of Namibia largely celebrates social economic development as success without seemingly taking a closer look at the realities. Gender-based violence in particular is put into perspective and officially adopted policies are celebrated instead of unpleasant realities. Now, an estimated 1 million pangolians have been and continue to be harvested from the wild in African and Asian countries to meet the high demands for their scales, skin, blood, and even pittises that are believed to have several different uses, both in fashion, traditional medicine, and cooking. And that's it for us at Sunset News. Make sure you join Sunset News on Facebook on all the NMH website weekdays as well as on our website oneup2.com. Sunset News screens on DSTV channel 285 and on Go TV channel 94 every weekday from 7.30 to, 20, so from 7 30 to 8 p.m. From me, Glenora Shipura, this is Sunset News. Don't end your day without us. <laughs>